So this video is a response to a user um, who asked for a feature to be added to GPVDM. Um, so what the user wanted to do was simulate white LEDs or white OLEDs and for white OLEDs you need multiple emission layers so you might need a material emitting um, red, green and blue so this requires um, three distinct layers in your OLED structure to be able to emit um, white light. So if you, so this is a demonstration effectively of how to, how to do this. So if you click, um, double click on organic um, OLED and save the example simulation as for example, example two on the desktop, and we'll save that there. Um, and here's our structure. So it's a, it's a typical OLED structure. We've got um, one, two, three, four, five layers. The bottom one's aluminium, and then we've got some organic layers on top. Um, now, previously we had the emissions database. So here we have the sort of emission that you can emission spectra you can choose from. You can add more spectra up here, so you can have um, you know this this spectra or, or whatever spectra you want. And you're able to pick one of these structures, and you're able to go to the ray tracing editor and choose which structure was going to be used for when the model did ray tracing and calculated what a light escaped the device. So. I've slightly changed this now in that we've now got an emission parameters tab down here just below the electrical parameters tab. So if you click on the emission parameters tab you get this window up here and effectively for each electrically active layer you get a, a separate a separate tab. And this button on the top says emission enable for this layer so that decides whether or not this layer can emit light. And this structure I've just chosen that the, as an example these two layers are going to be able to emit light so we've got emission enabled from this layer turned on. The second option down here it says use experimental emission spectra so this means we're going to be using one of these emission spectra in our emission spectra database um, to calculate the emission. You don't have to do that you can calculate the emission from first principles by turning that off and then you get all these parameters again that you um, had when you were calculating um, photoluminescence from first principles considering um, free and trap recombination. So this is the actual emission spectra we're going to be using for this layer. So we've just chosen randomly this emission spectra. And then for the other layer, we're just choosing a different emission spectra. So two just very different emission spectra. And this final number down here, it says emissions, experimental emission um, efficiency. So this number represents for each photon that's, um, for, each photo, for each electron pair that recombines in a layer, how many photons does that generate? So I've just set these at, at one. Um, but you, you, know, you could change those depending on, on, on what you think you should have experimentally. So it's going to go ahead and run that simulation now. And um, so we'll, we'll just go back to the terminal. We'll firstly see that it's run an optical simulation. So it's run a ray tracing simulation and then it's done a current voltage curve for that OLED structure. Um, the first thing to notice is that um, it says ray tracing and then it's got the wavelength, then it's got layer two, then it's got the same wavelength again, and it's got layer three. So if we go back to the device structure and we look and look at it, we've got um, zero, one, two, three, four layers in the device. So it's effectively doing ray tracing from the third and the fourth layer there, and that's because we've switched on emission in the third and the fourth layer of the device. Um, so that's the first thing to notice. Um, and it performs one ray tracing simulation for each layer. So if we look at that in the, um, in, in, in the 3D view, so if we sort of go to the size of the device, and if we turn off the device structure to make it a bit more clear, device view, we can see we're doing ray tracing on a central point in, in, the, in one layer of the device. So this here, it says 515, and that two represents layer um, two. But then if we go down, we've got layer three. So we can find 515 and then layer three and if we look at where that point is in the device if we watch that very carefully we go to layer uh, three five pound five one five we, we change to layer three um, we can see that point moves down so that's being that ray trace is, is being started in the center of that layer three of the device so um, we can we can scan through effectively and see how light oops how light escapes the device as a function of both wavelength and, and from each layer. Um, then if we go to the output window, again we can see theta color here, so we can see how color effectively changes as a function of a viewing angle. Um, and if you really want an accurate picture of what's going on here, you probably need to um, bump up the number of rays 
that it's that is emitting here by going to the simulation editors, ray tracing editor, and you might want to rather than do I don't know, rather than doing fi five five steps, you might want to do a hundred or so. I, I, I don't I don't know. Um, and then uh, the final final thing, yeah. So so, so that's, that's effectively it. So that's enabling emission from multiple layers in the device. I hope you found that useful. It's just a quick video uh, demonstrating that feature. If you've got any questions, just drop me an email at info at gpvdm.com. Thank you very much.